Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from sysadmin102. First off, I want to apologize for my voice. is um, might sound a little bit uh, weird because I'm currently recovering from a cold. Um, and with that, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use an USB drive as a VM FS data store in a VMware ESXi. So, um, using a USB drive as a VMFS uh, data store in uh, ESXi, it can be incredibly uh, useful for home lab uh, environment where you don't have that extra storage to store your virtual machine. Because by default, VMware not letting you store anything on a USB. While the USB device is not support, uh, officially supported by a VMFS data store, um, you can do it. And again, uh, before you jump into any conclusions, this uh, method is only uh, for non-reduction environment. It not mean for reduction environment. So if you plan to use it on the reduction environment, uh, use it at your own risk. And before we jump into the step, uh, I want to give credit uh, to uh, Verton.net. Uh, so the original tutorial is on Verton.net. In this video, I'm just going to demonstrate the step-by-step -step that originally uh, written by uh, uh, Verton.net. So all credit go back to the original uh, author. All right, moving on to uh, step number one, we're gonna enable Edit Edge on the ESXi host. All right, so from the uh, ESXi host, we're gonna select Actions and we're gonna select Services and we're gonna select Enable Secure Shell Edit Edge. All right, next step, we're gonna open up uh, Terminal. The command gonna be Edit Edge and then the username or root at the IP address of your ESXi. So in this case, 10.13.2.213. And first thing is we're going to disable the USB uh, arbitrator service. So this is going to prevent the pass through issues. The command going to uh, include it in the written tutorial uh, down in the descriptions. So you can just copy and paste. And this command only uh, temporarily disable the USB uh, arbitrator service. So after you reboot your VMware ESXi, um, it's going to restart again. Um, and that's going to prevent you to mounting the storage. So to permanently disable the USB arbitrator, you can use the check config USB uh, arbitrator off command to make sure that it up even after restart and then we can use the list command to list all the available disks uh, you can use the dash l uh, or you can use the dash lh the that lh will list as, um, all the disks with the uh, this side as well so it make it a little bit easier to uh, figure out like which one at the USB drive that you just inserted. And now we're going to insert it the USB drive. So for USB, uh, I'm actually recommended you not using the actual USB, but instead using like a NVMe or SATA USB external hard drive. So that way, you know, you don't have to worry about a USB going to suddenly um, not working anymore because SATA and NVMe is uh, a lot more stable. Uh, better performance compared to a USB. All right, and we're going to run the command one more time to show um, the new USB uh, NVMe that I just inserted. All right, and now notice that you had the um, HPA33, so my NVMe is 512 uh, with the over revisionings. So four six uh four seventy six four nine so that the USB that uh, NVMe that I just inserted. Another way to identify the USB device ID that you just inserted, you can do that by monitoring the VM kernel log. So we can cat the var log and uh, VM kernel dot log. All right. So the most recent one that we just inserted, so that the V, 
VM HPA 33. So that's the one that we just inserted. All right, let me go back to do this. All right. So make sure that you take note of the uh, device ID. So this is my. Um, you see the uh, number one right here. It's just uh, indicating that uh, that the uh, partition number one of that uh, physical disk. All right. Next step, we're gonna create a GPT uh, partition table. So you can uh, copy my command. Just make sure that you release the mbx dot um, to um, your USB disk patch instead of mine. All right, so I'm gonna copy that one, and I'm gonna change the HBA to the number thirty-three, which is uh, the one that connected to my uh, USB NVMe drive. And moving on to the next step, we're gonna create a VMFS partitions. So in order to do that, you will need the star sector. Uh, the GUI for VMFS, uh, which the value I already provided in my written tutorial. Uh, the start on way gonna be 2040A, and the VMFS uh, GUI is gonna be um, this right here. And we need to determine the N uh, sector for um, our uh, USB. So you can copy that command, and then you would. Again, uh, make sure that you got a correct um, patch. So this is 33. All right, so that's the end sector for us. So with that, we're gonna create the uh, partitions using uh, the parted U2 command. All right, I'm gonna copy that command. And then we can copy the end sector right here. We're gonna move over to the end sector and replace this with the actual end sector. All right, and we're gonna select enter. Oh, that because I forgot to change the HPA to a 33. So the issue that I forgot to uh, replace this with my actual uh, HPA number, 33. There we go. And lastly, we're gonna format the USB drive as the VMFS uh, data store. Uh, in did the uh, example, I'm gonna format it using the VF, uh, VMFS6. However, you can uh, format it as uh, the VMFS5 as well. All right, and we can change that back to 33. All right, so we successfully created the uh, new volume. So I'm gonna go back to uh, ESXi. Uh, GUI and then we're gonna refresh it and right there right now we have a USB data store before I wrapping up the tutorial here are some uh, troubleshooting uh, tip for you a majority of the time if you uh, the data store is not mounting after you restart that because uh, you need to stop the USB arbitrator service uh, you can disable this uh, permanently using the command in step one However, if you don't want to do that, you have the option too. You just have to stop it. And then after that, you can manually mount the data store. And if you get to this point, uh, you have successfully configured your USB drive as a VMF data store in VMware ESXi. And again, this method is ideal for home lab only. It's not recommended for reduction use. And that concluded uh, today's video. If you think the video is helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.